Hi guys, it's Matt here. Recently I've been doing some Unity development. I thought I might put together some videos on how you can get your Unity game out of Unity and up onto the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. In this video I'm going to talk about how you can get it up onto the Apple App Store. The first thing you'll need is an Apple developer account. If you want to just test it out on your physical device, you don't need a paid developer subscription. But if you want to push it out onto the App Store or test flight testing, you're going to need that paid subscription, which is 99 US a year. And here in Australia, $150 because we get ripped off on everything. The other thing you're going to need to have is a Mac or a MacBook. As, of course, the iOS developer toolchain is only on Mac because Apple doesn't like other people. And finally, the last thing you're going to need is to have Xcode installed on your MacBook, which you can just download from the App Store. It's a free download and it's only massive. Once you've got all those set up, you can come over into Unity and we can get started building our game for iOS. To do that, we want to go File, Build Settings, and select iOS. If you didn't download the iOS dev tools, you'll come up with a screen like this. This is for Apple TV. You just want to go open downloads page and you're going to have to, it will manually download all of those tools for you. I don't want to download this, so I'll just cancel out of that. iOS installed on your dev machine. You're ready to start setting up your Unity project to be built into iOS. The next thing you want to do is click this add open scenes button and add all of the scenes in your project to this build settings page. This is how Unity knows what to include in that final build package and what you're going to be pushing out to the App Store. So open your scenes in the editor and click this Add Open Scenes button to add them all in here. The final two things we want to do in this page is select the platform we're building to, in this case iOS, and click the Switch Platform button. Unity will freeze up for a couple of seconds until you see this little Unity symbol move over to iOS as a platform. And Finally, we want to press this build settings button. This will open up this page over here in the project inspector. For now we can just close this and we're going to look over here at all these settings and what they mean. Up here at the top of the page is your default settings. First one is company name, which we don't really need to worry about on iOS as the company name that's included in the bundle. I don't actually know if this is included in the bundle. But anyways, this isn't displayed anywhere by the iOS. So if you're only targeting iOS, you can probably leave this, although it doesn't hurt to change it. Next up is the product name. This is what's displayed under your app icon on the user's home screen. So change this to, of course, your app. Default icon is the icon for your app that comes up on that user's home screen. Unity takes care of all of that for you. So just add your icon as an asset down here in the project class and then you'll be able to select it there. Whoops, I closed that. So if you ever lose that, just go into that build settings page and then player settings. Uh, next we have the default cursor. So if you want a custom cursor, you can change that here. Again, we're targeting iOS, so there is no cursor because it's a touch screen. Uh, cursor hotspot, again, don't need to worry about that because we are targeting the touch screen device. Tabs are the specific settings for each of the platforms that you can target and that you have installed in Unity at this time. Let's go through all these settings really quickly and see what they all mean and what you can change. The first is resolution and presentation. These settings talk about how your app is presented within the iOS and how the iOS overlays over your app. Um, it includes settings like rotation, so turn the device, do you want it to turn, do you want the animation? what orientations your app supports, portrait, upside down portrait, landscape left, landscape right, uh, whether you require full screen, whether you want a status bar displayed, what type of status bar do you want displayed, and some other settings down here that are more specific to game development. Again, we don't need to really worry about any of them unless you want your game to be specifically landscape, specifically portrait. Next up, we've got icon. If you want to use your own custom icons, you can set that up here, but honestly, just take advantage of that thing. Uh, splash image, uh, this is the image that comes up when your app first loads and while the, uh, the OS sort of sorts out all your files and builds all your files, probably best to set this, but it's not a requirement. As you can see, I built this before and it gave me a warning, but it's not a requirement. Debug and crash reporting, this is if you want to log 
what's happening in your app. You don't really need to worry about it. Final and most important set of settings for iOS is this other settings panel. Well, the rendering don't really need to worry about unless you're using some more advanced features. But this is where it gets important down here. The most important part is identification. This is how you identify the build that you push up to iTunes Connect. And if you've ever used Xcode, you'll recognize most of this. So the first thing is your bundle ID, which is of course in that reverse domain style that uh, all the bundle IDs on iOS work in. And you want this to be the same as the bundle ID you have set up for your app in iTunes Connect. Below this we have the version number, so here you go, 1, 1.1, 1 .1, uh, standard versioning, build of this version, so you may want to do multiple builds of the same version because you're testing it out, testing things. That's where you set this up here. Final feature down here is developer team ID. This you've probably never thought of or looked at because Xcode just handles it for you, but when you're building through Unity, you need to set it manually. As you can see, it gives you a nice little useful pop-up saying developers can retrieve their team ID by visiting the developer site account membership. I might quickly just show you where that is. So developer, developer.apple.com, go account. You'll be asked to log in with your, you'll be asked to log in with the Apple ID that's attached to your developer account. And just here in membership, this has all my personal details, so I'm not going to open it. You can open this up and you'll get a, um, string of characters called team ID which will resemble this here. That's what you want to copy over. We have scripting backend. Again, this is a more advanced feature that you don't really need to think about. Device targeting. If you only want to target iPhones or iPads, you can set that up here. Target SDK. So this is an important thing you need to change. If you want to test in the iOS simulators that come part of Xcode, you can swap over this here and you can build it to that simulator. But that same build can't be used to build to physical devices or push up to the App Store. So for when you're pushing up to the App Store or building onto a physical device, you want to select Device SDK. Minimum iOS version, again, Unity takes care of this. So if you're using any special features, don't need to worry about this. On-demand resources, if you're dividing your app into smaller chunks um, that of assets that can be downloaded individually from the App Store. It comes selected if you've used those developer tools. Again, this is a more advanced feature that most people won't worry about. Don't need to worry about that. These are your permissions if you're using the camera, location, or uh, microphone usage descriptions in iOS 9 and up. It comes up with that little description when it asks for permission for these various things. So you want to give your descriptions in here. Uh, prepare iOS for recording, require persistent Wi-Fi. Again, these are all sort of things that most people won't use and they're pretty self-explanatory. There's really nothing else you would want to change unless you're getting sort of deeper into the development tools. Once you've got all this set up, particularly these guys here, you're ready to move on to actually building your app and then opening up an Xcode ready for us to push it, to build it into iOS, push it up to the App Store. So let's actually build our Xcode project. Open up build settings and then I go build. We'll ask you where you want to save the Xcode project. By default, it will come up in your Unity project. You don't want to do this, especially if you're using source control. So I usually go to my overall project folder, click save, and then it will build our Xcode project. Once Unity has built our project, We'll get our, it will open it up here in Finder, we can just get rid of this now. And it will open this up in Finder, which is, as you'll probably recognize, an Xcode project. And most important, we have our Xcode project file here that you just want to open. Basically, the way to approach this is don't pay attention to anything down here or any of the errors. Unity basically just wants you to treat Xcode like a black box. If you want to test it out on a physical device that you've got plugged into your computer, you can just select it up here. But of course, for this video, we want to put it up onto the App Store. To do that, it's basically the same project as building a normal iOS app. We're gonna go Product, Archive, 
and this will build your app. This will take a couple of minutes. It has to build something like 190 uh, project files. After your app has been uh, built by Xcode, you'll see the familiar uh, Xcode organizer come up. This is your project here. You don't need to worry about why it's called Unity iPhone. It's the right name and all the right names will come up. You can just press upload to App Store. Select your uh, development team. You can press the upload button and your app is up on the store ready to submit for review and actually get selling it. So good luck with that. Uh, I'm going to do another video on building your app for Android and getting that up on the Google Play Store. So keep an eye out for that when that comes out.